We will always be there by your side. The words of US Secretary of State Antony Blinken as he reaffirmed America's full support to Israel, but warned that precautions must be taken to avoid harming civilians of every nationality. The Secretary of State said he'll continue to send defence support after meeting Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a visit to Tel Aviv. Israeli media has said the number of those killed since the attacks by the Palestinian militant group Hamas on Saturday has risen to at least 1,300. Many Western governments, including the US and the UK, have designated Hamas as a terrorist organisation. Mr Blinken also confirmed that 25 Americans are known to have died. It comes as Israeli airstrikes on Gaza have continued, with the health ministry there saying that more than 1,350 people have now been killed. Israel says the complete siege on Gaza will not end until hostages are released. The International Committee of the Red Cross is warning hospital generators could run out of fuel today after the only power station in Gaza ran out of fuel. Mr Blinken's due to meet Palestinian leaders on Friday, where he'll push diplomatic efforts to end the fighting. Well, these are some of the other key developments this hour. The United Nations says more than 338,000 people have now been forced to flee their homes in Gaza as a humanitarian situation worsens. Ahead of a possible incursion into Gaza, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has established a national emergency unity government with leader of the opposition, Benny Gantz. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Secretary has announced that the government set to facilitate flights to help British citizens leave Israel. Anthony Blinken and Benjamin Netanyahu, as we've been mentioning, have been speaking at a joint news conference in Israel. Let's have a listen in to what they said. We know Hamas instead of promoting the well-being of its citizens, rules repressively and dedicates the resources it has to terror tunnels and rockets. We know Hamas didn't commit its heinous acts with the interests of Palestinian people in mind. We know Hamas does not stand for the future that Palestinians want for themselves and for their children. Hamas has only one agenda, to destroy Israel and to murder Jews. No country can or would tolerate the slaughter of its citizens or simply return to the conditions that allowed it to take place. Israel has the right, indeed the obligation, to defend itself and to ensure that this never happens again. As the Prime Minister and I discussed, how Israel does this matters. We democracies distinguish ourselves from terrorists by striving for a different standard even when it's difficult, and holding ourselves to account when we fall short. Our humanity, the value that we place on human life and human dignity, that's what makes us who we are. And we count them among our greatest strength. That's why it's so important to take every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. And that's why we mourn the loss of every innocent life, civilians of every faith, every nationality, who've been killed. Tragically, the number of innocent lives claimed by Hamas's heinous attacks continues to rise. Among those, we now know that at least 25 American citizens were killed. We join families in Israel, in the United States, around the world, in mourning their immeasurable loss. Just some breaking news lines that have come in to us via the Reuters news agency, which says that Israel's military chief of staff has said, we did not meet the challenge of protecting Israel and uh, goes on to say, we will learn, we will investigate, but now is the time for war, uh, presumably responding to criticism over Israel's intelligence failures um, at the weekend. Well, now let's go live to our chief international correspondent, Lee Doucette, who is in Surat for us. Yes, to pick up on that uh, phrase, Regini, now is the time for war. And here in the south, as you can hear the sound of artillery, 
all the signs, all the sites are that Israel is preparing for an intensification of this war as we drove into Sterot, which at this point is less than a mile from the Gaza border. Uh, there was the constant sound of heavy artillery. And you can, I think you can see the, the plumes of black smoke rising. That's Gaza City in the background, now under non-stop bombardment. And we've been reporting on BBC News the humanitarian consequences of Israel's uh, attacks on the Gaza Strip. Israel continues to say that it's only attacking Hamas infrastructure, only aiming to take out Hamas's leaders. But as always in war, it's also a deepening humanitarian crisis. And they're feeling it here in southern Israel. Sarot has always been on the front line when it comes to increased confrontation between Israel um, and Gaza. The rockets have come in here year after year, decades after decades. The whole town, many places are now shut, but some people still want to stay, saying they can't afford to leave. So when we arrived in Sterot this morning, we met the mayor, Alon Davadi, who's appealing to the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, to help him evacuate this town. You have asked Prime Minister Netanyahu to evacuate all the residents of your town? Of course, because I want to give the, to the government and to the army a time to make the war against the Hamas and the Jihad. And this is a dangerous place now because we are so close to the uh, Gaza, uh, to the border of Gaza. I know that uh, I speak with you a few times in the last days. You see all the hundreds of the missiles that land on the town. You see all the injured that uh, uh, injured from the rocket. We have people that died from that. It's a good for the family that live in the road to be outside from the city. People have not left already? You people haven't asked left. them to left? Yes, people leave? People left. But imagine if you you have your family. You cannot rent a, a, a hotel for uh, one month from your money. This is responsible of the country to give them the uh, support that they need. What's and the mood in Sterot now? You always bear the brunt. You're so close to Gaza whenever there's a, a crisis erupts. We love our city. We love our government, uh, 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 the states of Israel. In my heart is breaking when I, when I speak with all the family that uh, that lo uh, le uh, lose their, uh, uh, you know, father or mother that uh, murder, uh, for, uh, uh, murder uh, with the terror murder them. The terrorists murder them. My bre my heart is breaking. But we need to make the job with the people. We need to take care to the people that live here. And uh, and uh, thanks to God, I hope that we have the courage to continue and to crush the Jihad and the Hamas. Are you angry at your government that this has uh, happened? No, I'm not angry. I'm angry about our uh, uh, love of to the... I will say something. You know, you are in the BBC. You always, and I know that you are do it because you are one that the world will be good. Jihad and Hamas, it's an organiz organization that take money and the support from Iran. Jihad and Hamas don't care about the future of Gaza and don't care about the future of Israel. But because, you must care about the future of Gaza. It's your neighbor. It's just because a mile away. That if we want, if you want that the future of this area will be good, we need to find the way to take the Hamas and the Jihad out from Gaza, to take all the weapons that they have outside from Gaza. In, in, if they don't want to do it, we need to kill them. We need to destroy them. Not for me, for you and for all of us. And because that, I said to the, 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 the prime minister, take your time. If you need one month, two months to make uh, the war from today and it take you two months to destroy them, let's do it. Let's do it. Just take the people out, give them the supply that they need, and uh, we pray together, me and you and everyone, to, to God, that the God give us the power to uh, destroy the, the, the evil. This is it. People here said that in 2008, 2014, because, 2021. No, 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 no. It keeps happening. No, it's because when always, when we start to make an operation in Gaza, after one week, after two weeks, the leadership of Britannia, the leadership of United States and all the country say to Netanyahu and say to our prime minister, stop, stop. We, you need, and I hear the Biden, what Biden said, 
I said thank you for you, the, the President of the United States, of your support. I said thank you for all the uh, leadership of the country that support Israel. You need to say to Netanyahu, take your time. If you need your, our weapon, if you need our soldier, we need to destroy it and vanish, and vanish the Hamas and the Jihad from the area. Well, Lise is still with us, but before we go back to Lise and Surat, we have an update from the Gaza Health Ministry. Uh, the latest now is that 1,417 Palestinians have been killed since Israeli strikes on, since Saturday, and 6,268 have been wounded. Lise, uh, back to you now. When we were talking to you earlier, we could hear the sound of artillery in the background. How are people who want to leave Gaza going to be able to get safe passage? Well, that is the big issue. It, it, it's a very dangerous moment. The people of Gaza, every time there is a crisis like this, they hear Israel's warning to the people of Gaza to leave, and they say there's, no, we're, there's nowhere for us to leave to. There's nowhere uh, safe enough for us to hide. You know, we have to keep reminding our, our, our viewers that Israel pulled out its troops in 2005, but Israel still controls the airspace, it still controls the waters, it controls all of the crossings around this coastal strip, except one which goes through Egypt, and, and, and Israel bombed it the other day. So today, uh, the Egyptians pleaded with the Israelis, please don't bomb the crossing at Rafah. Uh, the Rafah crossing is open today, but they can only take in 400 a day and there will be tens of thousands of desperate people trying to get out if of course they have the paperwork to get out and that's why there are intensive discussions going on with the Egyptians the Americans many other countries including the British providing safe passage a way out through that crossing and also allowing food and fuel uh, uh, to get in to help people who, who can't leave. I mean, most people will want to leave if only for a short time. Egypt, of course, is worried that it'll have a huge influx of people and that, as always in this region, a temporary situation becomes a permanent one and no one, they don't want to see a, a depopulation. And also it's dangerous. People are hiding in their basements if there's bombardment. I mean, look at that. What's now the, the smoke that's drifting through the sky children elderly to walk on the streets there there there's there there's glass everywhere the, the rubble strewn across the streets it's dangerous inside the home and it's dangerous outside the home it's dangerous everywhere in gaza now and lise we've been reporting throughout the day a build-up of troops at the border everyone's trying to guess when that israeli land incursion might come what's your assessment and what are you thinking at the moment it is a very complex, a very dangerous undertaking. The Israeli Defense Forces has said that the decision to go in, to, to launch this kind of operation, has still not been taken. But everything around, uh, all the preparations, all of the statements, all of the pressure suggests nothing else, that there will, at some point, have to be a ground invasion. This is something Israel has tried to avoid. We saw in 2014 they made some kind of, they did make incursions across the border. They were trying to destroy the tunnels which were used by Hamas to bring, uh, to, to penetrate into uh, southern Israel, to bring in resources. But they didn't go in for a full a full scale invasion. Now the big question is, are they going to go in? Are they going to try to reoccupy Gaza? This will be fighting street by street, house by house, room by room. It is a densely populated enclave. And it seems beyond very, absolutely certain that if Hamas took made all the preparations to carry out this unprecedented assault, they will have also carried out unprecedented preparations to be ready when it knows that Israel will retaliate. They are ready now. They're waiting for Israel to come in as Israel prepares. And all the signs are is that this is gathering pace by the day. One of the BBC's best, Lise Doucette. Please do stay safe.